Now, floor is yours. Let's start. So who's first? Okay, gentlemen in the second row, please. Hello. It's uh, Tony O'Donoghue from RTE Ireland. And uh, Vera, it's becoming traditional now to ask you about injuries ahead of these big games. It was Denise O'Sullivan before the game against Australia. We're concerned about Louise Quinn and her fitness, so can you bring us up to date on how she is? Yeah, um, we're also a bit concerned. Um, we think th that she can play, but um, yeah, we are always honest. So now also she's going to train and we see how far she gets. I don't it's know if you've been injury. told, or, or do you notice that the, the covers have been put over the, the pitch here? So yeah. Canada has decided not to come here for a familiarisation. Will, will you make the same call? No, we will come here. We think it's important to come here. And in terms of the weather, and uh, it looks like it's going to be a lovely Irish sort of day tomorrow. <laughs> um, I think for us, we don't bother about the weather, what kind of weather it is, because we're used to it. Huh? And what sort of threat do you think Canada will pose? Um, Canada is a very, very experienced team and uh, they know how to have patience in, in getting their results. Um, they often um, get their results in the later stages. So that shows that uh, they have to trust to keep on going with their game plan. Um, they have a few exceptional players. Fleming will play tomorrow. Um, Sinclair, of course, is a huge threat. Um, and in their teamwork, they're very experienced. So uh, we are fully aware of their strength and um, we hope they can we can put something against it. Okay, next, uh, the front row with orange. Yeah, thank you. Uh, English, Jessica Crichton, Sky Sports. Vera, after losing that first game, does this game now become must win or at least must not lose? Um, yeah, well you can only look in the future. Um, it depends, of course, of, on the results of others. Um, but winning starts with not losing. Um, and that is a very cliche, but uh, very much true. Um, so if you, um, if you play a game like this against the Olympic champion, uh, you have to stay realistic. But it's clear that, um, that yeah, w do we want to go through this group, then we need a result. That's clear. Yes, next. If we win, we have it in our own hands. If we, if we may have a draw, then we're dependent on other results, even if we win from Nigeria. Hi, um, English. My name's Shaban from Talksport. I just wondered about the, the amount of travelling that's been going on for the Ireland side and now flying out here to fly back after the game. That's another 11 hours in the air. Has that affected any preparation or any recovery at all for the players? Um, we do not notice. We're actually um, very well um, aware of what it could do to players, and we did not see it. So they're very fit, our players, and can uh, can cope with so much. But it's maybe you need to ask Kira how she feels, because she's the one who's playing on the pitch <laughs> under those circumstances. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, but yeah, no, that is, yeah, it's um, the travel is inevitable, and I think that Every team is dealing with that as well and na trying to navigate that between their games. I think the time between the games is uh, given us a lot of um, ability to to bounce back from any of that um, or just navigate kind of the, that, those hours in the air, but as well as um, our fitness as well. We've been, we've had a few trainings in Perth now and uh, have really uh, been performing and uh, playing well, so we haven't felt too much of it at, at this point yet. And there's also a part there. Eh? Yes, there is a lot of traveling, and we knew that. There's a lot of traveling coming to the other side of the world, but this is what we want, isn't it? This is what we emphasize, and uh, the, um, we embrace it instead of hiding it. Okay, Hi. next. Hi, uh, Jane Diggle, BBC English. Um, you were so unlucky, this is for both uh, Vera and Kira. Um, you were so unlucky not to score, particularly in the last few moments uh, of the match against Australia. Do you feel that your performance has boosted confidence, especially when you're going into a match against the Olympic champions? Yeah, uh, great question. Thank you. Those last, uh, I'd say like the, the last 25 minutes, especially those last key minutes of the, the Australia game, you're right, it did, uh, it did really uh, light a fire under us and kind of show this 90 minute plus minute uh, 
team that we have in us and the ability, the dangers we have in us um, throughout an entire game. And uh, I'd say that that definitely was something that we take away looking back on, having looked back on the game and going forward it, that we want to continue to bring into this game and kind of remember that we are reliable and we are, um, we have that endurance, we have that that longevity to make sure that we can come up with a result in the 90 plus minute or at any minute in the game. So uh, yeah, I'd say that that was definitely a, a positive going, leaving the Australia game. Hi, uh, Vera David Kelly, Irish Independent. I, is there any reason the covers are on the field? I've never seen that before for a, a, a soccer game at a tournament or other play. I presume it's because of the rain. <laughs> other than that, I don't know. <laughs> Pitch protection. Pitch protection. Yeah. Uh, it, it was uh, used a lot uh, 20 years ago to 50 years ago, something like that. Um, in the Netherlands, they covered a lot of times the pitches to, to protect it. Um, so it must have been uh, well overthought, and they know their stadium. Okay, next, last row. It's Claire Hanna with TSN. This is for Kira. Kira, when you watch a team, 40th ranked Nigeria, get a draw against the Canadians, how does that affect the confidence of your team as you approach this match? Yeah, um, we are watching the, the game on our travels back uh, into Brisbane. And uh, it is, I think, uh, like most of the games that we've been watching in this World Cup, I mean, the Philippines just came up with a win against New Zealand. It's the World Cup, and anything can happen at this stage. Any team is capable of anything on this platform. And I think that that almost was a vote of confidence to us on the bus that that is the same, the same rules apply to us. It, it, or it applies to everyone in this tournament. And that's something that we definitely take in stride moving into this game tomorrow. So next, a gentleman with gray yeah. t-shirts. Yeah. Yes. Um, Kira, how's it going? Um, just wanted to ask you about, um, you obviously nobody questions your Irishness, but you are from Southern California. So does the way you play out here is this a little bit unfamiliar for you, or do you have to kind of think a little bit extra about how you ru make runs for balls and whatnot? Um, yeah, grew up in San Diego. Uh, played my entire professional career in Europe at this point. So um, I'd say that, and uh, having been in the squad now for as many years as I have, and playing under Vera for as many years as I, as I have, I think I, I've very much grown into kind of the role in which I need to play at an international, uh, at the international stage, as is, does any professional in any, uh, in any team they walk into, new team, their home team, their international team. So I'd say that I back myself in my being versatile and flexible, and I think that my growth under uh, this program and with Ireland has, has come so far, and I think that uh, is a testament to where myself and the team are today. And... Um, but yeah, I'd say that I am quite comfortable in what we do now, and especially my role as a, um, as an item with our team. Gentleman. Oh. Hi, Vera. Uh, John Fallon here from the Irish Examiner. Yeah, gentleman in the back row. Yeah. yeah just clarification on Louise's current situation. Uh, I believe I think she only had a limited involvement in training last night. Is today's training session going to involve fun full contact for her? And yes. is that basically going to act as a as a fitness test? Yeah, and her reaction on that. Yeah. And and are you planning? Have you got a contingency in place if she's unavailable? Yes, of course. Plan B is ready, of course. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Hi, Vera. Hi. Uh, Emma Duffy from the Forty Two. Just to confirm, Louise Quinn is the only injury concern. You have a fully fit squad, otherwise. Uh, so far, yes. Yeah. So all will be revealed after training. Um, yeah, um, it, it's waiting for all of us. Um, it's an injury that is not very straightforward and um, uh, it's just really relying on how she reacts on uh, the current uh, or the next training in an hour. And I'm not hiding anything. I'm always open about that because I don't think that you win or lose a game on, on hiding it. English, Jessica Crichton, Sky Sports. Kira, the nails look good. They're very on brand. Thank you. <laughs> How worried are you that Louise Quinn striding up to the centre forward position in the last few minutes of that Australia game might just take your spot? Yeah, hey, fair enough question. Um, I'd say that uh, Lou's got a few inches on me and <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> not seeing myself growing anytime soon. So, uh, uh, but yeah, no, to, to be fair, um, 
it's something that as a team, when we, we've discussed kind of like what game plans look like at what minutes of games and where we are as a team and what we need to change in moments and stuff like that. And I think, um, and Luis is an aerial threat and that is massive. And I know myself as well is an aerial, th is an aerial threat, but of course, like you, when you have the height of Luis, you got, you have to put her in the box and somewhere in, you know, when you're, when you're putting balls in the box, you need, you want to head like that on the ball. Um, yeah, so I'd say that fair play to her, and um, yeah, who knows? Maybe, maybe she, maybe she is a post up forward sometime in her future. Who knows? Good, Good question. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Gentleman in the side row, uh, Kelly again. Um, Vera was talking about um, discussions she's had with you about hesitation. You know, we saw that moment um, in the first half with a chance. Uh, uh, talk to through that process in terms of your own mindset, in terms of you know at this level that you need to take all the chances that you get and be more decisive. What's been that like in terms of working through that process? Yeah, yeah, I think that um, it is something that we discuss, um, Ferris discussed with me, discussed with us offensively and as a team. Um, I think that it's it's always hard to kind of figure out in, in those moments, you'd only have split seconds to make decisions. But um, I think that the thing that sticks with you the most is Vera has really encouraged us to be free and to make those daring decisions like you know be brave enough to fail have courage in that and uh and that is something that really sticks in my head especially after watching the last game and kind of seeing those a few moments or even watching other games in this world cup you're seeing those moments where players and teams are have the courage to fail and have are brave enough to to make something happen and i think that um i think that's really a, p a positive thing and it's an, it's encouraging to to continue to say that amongst us because uh, we, are a, we are a team that can do that. We thrive in that, and we are an incredibly brave team. I mean, you watch us play all the time. It's, we are fearless in that, and we just can't lose that at this stage. It's the most important thing to keep with us. Next question. Yes. Gentleman with glasses, please, yes. Thank you, Neil Davidson, the Canadian Press. Vera, earlier Bev Priestman praised your teams spirit and passion and talked about uh, how your team was willing to do anything not to concede. You've coached a lot of teams in this game. How would you compare your team's character to others you've compared in that score? Oh, ev every team is so different because a team is built up and determined by the personalities in that squad. Um, the Irish d DNA is that they're very good um, in um, the I have to say, they're protecting their ground uh, and fighting for their ground. Um, and that is something that was in the squad before I came. Um, when after the first game, um, I called my husband and he s didn't even say congratulations or hi. The only thing he said, uh, he said was congratu congratulations with this team. What a fighters. So that's the way he picked up. Um, so that is really something that is characteristic of this Irish team. The other teams uh, were completely different. Uh, in South Africa, there were more street football players um, uh, who had to learn complete other things. And um <coughs> the Netherlands uh, were a team that was growing from amateur level at that moment uh, still. Uh, the Scottish team were players that maybe went through walls when it wasn't possible. <laughs> uh, so every team has their own DNA and their own characteristics. Uh, but this fighting team, this, this spirit of this team to do things together, that is something that's in the DNA of this team. Yes, next please. Um, I'll direct this question to Kira. Your teammate, um, Sinead, she, her, her comeback is very well documented. And just watching one of your teammates you know, claw their way back into the sport. Have you spoken to her about how this past year has gone for her and, and how inspiring is it for you to watch a teammate go through that and get back to this form? Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, so funny enough, uh, it's uh, just the other day in training, um, we were just passing the ball around and uh, someone made a comment about um, just like how long Sinead had been playing and stuff and and uh, she was like, oh yeah, you know, like, you know, being my age and, and, and coming back and and it, it, it's crazy to think that sometimes some of our like some of our teammates forget that like she has had taken such a long sabbatical hiatus from the sport as long as she did. And I remember being in uh, the USA camps and speaking with her between games, and just thinking. And I just quite, I was like, what was the what was the hardest thing? What was the hardest thing to come back 
coming back into this because I mean I suffered you know a few, few injuries here and there that have kept you you know keep you out for a few weeks to a few months and it feels like it takes years off your life to come back to the sport sometimes and so for her to take the time that she did and it's she is so well thought or well spoken and she's very and she's very incredibly thoughtful with like the way in which she feels her feelings and has and the way she describes the way coming back to it coming back into her fitness and stuff but the way she described it was very much it reminded me of how any of us describe how we play that grittiness that digging deep that almost to the the days of a feeling of questioning yourself and being in the days of not knowing what would the other side would look like, but trusting that this is what you want to be doing and that the grit is what makes it worth it, then that's why not everyone does it. I mean, if it were easy, everyone would be doing it, right? But, um, yeah, I think it resonates incredibly with the team. And sometimes you, you, know, you know you're just passing the ball around and you even forget about it just because her touch is that nice. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, props to her. And I think it's a, it's, a, it's a testament to her character and it very much reflects how, that Irish spirit in her as well. When she reached out to you, talking about you know her interest in getting back into soccer, you know, did you ever imagine that she would be here, uh, you know, a year ago when you spoke to her? Yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, we got in touch uh, last summer, uh, our summer, mm -hmm. uh, so a year ago about, and uh, she was starting to train and asked me, um, like that she had, well she was telling that she had a passport or w in the final stages and that she was thinking of coming back and how to deal with that. And her coach actually reached out to me because that was the first step and said she she's thinking of it. So we got in contact and we slowly build a, a relationship. Um, and um, I think the key thing, if, um, if somebody has been out for so long and with that background, uh, she just needed time and to, to start slowly and to get, she said, I first need to get my body back in sport. And she did that so, so well. Um, and that is the reason why she only played in that last stages, because she had prepared herself for almost half a year to actually play in football again. Uh, it's not something that's coming out of the air. It was step by step by step, and we had very regular contact about it without anyone knowing. Um, but it's so brave that she made that step, and I, it, it's so good to see her smiling and uh, to be part of the squad and doing so well. Okay, next question from the middle with black jacket, please. Uh, Cam Wiper from Soccer 25 East. Uh, Kira, this is for you. Um, th you might not be aware, but there is a huge uh, Irish community in Perth, and you will have also experienced firsthand the huge amount of support you received in Sydney. What does it mean to you as a player to see these fans that have come, that have come out from Australia themselves, but also flown across the world as well to support you and be there for you? Yeah. Um, it's how I'd like to describe it is like it's undeniable it's it is palpable that feeling I always say but when we play home in Tala that we it's like playing with a 12th man on the pitch because it just feels like the crowd is just so much in, in the the way that the atmosphere is it feels like we're a man up and then, which is an incredible thing to have um, and I'd say that seeing the amount of support and the amount of people, not just loved ones, but just just anyone from around the world, any anyone who wanted to come out to Australia and, and be a part of our this experience with us and and follow us around to these games, it's it's literally like that 12th man on the pitch. And uh, yeah, the other day when we were playing in in the stadium in, in Sydney, though it's not it's not Tala, um, <laughs> it definitely remembering that all those people who have come out to see us and not only just see us in person but watching at their watch parties from any country around the world and trying and being a part of this process it's it's a good reminder to remember it's still that 12th man on the pitch it's still that that extra player on your team that's helping you out there and it's something that we try not to forget next question no Okay, so we'd like to close the uh, pre-match press conference for Team Republic, Republic of Ireland.